certified physician, he's an addiction medicine specialist, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> All right, now, Drew, a little, little something different tonight. Our yes. guests couldn't make it. Right. All right, we had guests, they're not here. That's all right. I figured that part out. Yes. Here's the part you don't know. We are going to the audience, we're pulling people out of the audience, we're having them as guests. That's, that's, that's... Is that your idea? No, really, I think that's brilliant. I think it's, uh, look, My what's the difference? was to destroy some equipment so we could all go home. But this is the second plan. Do you understand, all right. Drew? Look, the fact is, we're all people. Our, our audience can share just as well as a celebrity can. It's Absolutely. great. Absolutely. Just great. I'm, I'm, guessing, I'm guessing even better, probably. And uh, speaking of lovely guests, Chris McGaha, say hi. Yeah. enough we'll be using the pictel system we'll go out to sega city down to irvine and we'll take some live questions throughout the evening so a uh, full plate here on the love line table great all right ready to get started let's do it. all right let's use the pictel system and talk to steve in sega city steve hey guy how's it going good now the problem is is my roommate and his girlfriend are in a real real wild sex the thing is it's just not moaning and screaming but it's more like barking uh Cowboys and Indians, weird stuff like role play. I'm afraid that I'm gonna like come home and half my food in my fridge will be gone. The thing is, I pay rent there, she doesn't. But what do I do about it? All right. Do uh, you, you guys have separate rooms? Yeah. Okay. And we we get these calls from uh, time to time. And the worst thing is, I, I've had this before. Oh when really? I, oh yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Every roommate I've ever had has gotten more trim than me. Well, that goes without saying, but I didn't know you had the problem with the boundaries. But there's nothing worse than uh, you're sitting there, uh, you know, reading a Harlequin romance and drinking a warm cup of Bosco in your slippers, lonely as hell, horny as could be, lonesome as the devil. And you're hearing uh, this uh, shenanigans going. they got a three-ring circus going on in the other room, and you're not involved. That's... The night. It's, there's the stab of the sex with you not involved, and then the twist of the cowboy and Indians. All right. All right, but really, the problem, though, is between he and his roommate. I mean, this, right. is, a, this is an issue between roommates, is that you just don't appreciate what, you know, how your, your living space is being violated. I mean, right? Steve? Yeah. The thing, well, the thing is, is uh, it was just set up with school. And I don't really know the guy too well. He just got stuck with him. So I don't really don't know how to handle it with a new guy that I don't really know that well. Well, uh, you're going to have to hit it headlong. I mean, you're going to have to confront him directly and tell him it's just, you know, you just want to have some other kind of, some, some kind of an arrangement that you find acceptable, whether there's particular times or only when you're out of the house, whatever it is, put out there what it is you want in this living, in this living space. It'll be a... I mean, if you start building these kinds of resentments this early, it's going to be very, very unpleasant for the rest of the, the uh, time you're with him. Right. So, or you yeah. could do what I do and uh, pee in the shampoo. <laughs> All right, it Steve. It doesn't necessarily help. It just makes you feel better. Thank you, Steve. For the first time here on the Fabulous Love Line, we are going to the audience for the guests. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mark, Amber, and JD. <laughs> I guess we have to say <laughs> Thank you for coming on. We do appreciate it. All right, let's, uh, let's get a little background first. Uh, Mark, you're how old? 24. And what do you do? I run the web department at a video game company. Okay. And uh, computer nerd. Yeah. That's all right. No. No. <laughs> Computers, but not nerd, because uh, I got to go surf. All right. Then, uh, Amber, what do you do? I'm a student. You're how old? 19. And uh, where do you go? I'm at USC, Public Relations. <laughs> Fight on Trojan. Of course. <laughs> and uh, so you're doing, uh, you're doing public relations. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's going fine? Very good. Having sex with any professors? No, but if I get an A, then 
I think I might try it. Right. Wait a minute. If you fail, is when you got to try it. Oh, yeah. If I fail, then, That's then right. I'll try it. Boy, you got to teach these college students everything, don't we? <laughs> and uh, JD, how old are you? Uh, 27. And what do you do? Uh, I'm unemployed. Good man. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Then you're uh, trying to get into a junior college. No, I just got accepted to law school. Oh, really? Oh. All right. Uh, all right. Yeah. yeah. Bruce hates a lawyer, so don't you guys start up. I don't have to break anything up. All right, so you guys just uh, kick back, jump in when you want, and uh, see if you can help us out with some of these questions. Glenn. Yep. What's your question? Well, the other day, I was having oral sex with my girlfriend, and she uh, creeped in my face. I was like, that was gross. <laughs> the, the first thing she said was, what was that? I was just wondering if this was normal during oral sex. At first, I, I think this was an episode of Davy and Goliath I saw when I was... You never saw that one? No. I don't want to... No, Davy. All right. All right. All right. Uh, the queef. Does everyone know what that is? That's the, uh, the yep. sound a, a woman uh, makes, usually when she's uh, in the moist... Right? Yeah. It, it, it is normal. Glenn, be a little bit uh, considerate of your girlfriend. It's probably very embarrassing for her. Mm -hmm. It's a normal thing, all right? Okay. Do you care yeah, about but... your girlfriend? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you had to think about it. Glenn, <laughs> Glenn, switch positions, man. I mean, it fills up in certain positions. So, like, if you're hanging upside down, blowing in there, knock it off. <laughs> you know? Mark will be guest hosting. All right, let's keep going. Jonathan. Yeah. Hey, I got into pornography at the age of 16, and ever since then I have like got like over 500 videos and a thousand magazines. Like I had a job at McDonald's, and the money I got, I used it on pornography. All right. I have like younger friends, and they you could uh, go home and go for the Mick Whack. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, settle down. Is this your long-lost brother here? <laughs> you are. You guys you are separated at first, man. I, I did think, work at McDonald's, so yeah. coincidentally. It's got to the point where, like, I don't even want a girl no more. Like, I got some magazines. Like, why should I sell right. one? Well, Jonathan, there's something called sexual addiction or sexual compulsion. Let me just ask this question. Is there any alcoholism in your family? Um, my dad. Yeah, and people with alcoholic biological background can very easily get caught up in compulsive behaviors of other type whether it's gambling or sexual addictions. And really, this sounds like a true bona fide sexual addiction, uh, you know, where you're, where you're spending all your money on the, on the uh, phone sex. Well, when you're making pornography. 350 an hour and it's all going to that expensive <laughs> Swedish erotica, yes, that's an addiction. I mean, that's... It's having consequence. That's the main thing. Is that your, your compulsion with this material is having consequence in your life, and it's disturbing you. Really, you have to do something about this. This is not something that's a cycle that's likely to break. You'll, you may replace it with other things, particularly drugs or other compulsive behaviors, but unless you do something to take care of it, it's going to go on. There's an organization called SA, uh, Sex Anonymous, Sexaholics Anonymous, that actually is designed exactly for this problem. I suggest you call that. If you can't get that number, call AA in your area and ask for a referral to SA, okay? All right. Uh, All right. <laughs> I mean, that's, 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 that's true, but that, that is, you know, there, there are always psychological issues, and people have a lot of problems dealing with aggression, tend to get caught up in these sexual compulsions. But it's, that's the real McCoy. That's what that was. Amber, you, uh, you live on campus? Yes, I do. And actually, my old roommate, or not my old roommate, the guy that had the apartment before, had sexual literature come to the house. So every week, there would be pornography catalogs. But... I kind of enjoyed it. Oh, you did. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. And uh, we get a, uh, we get a lot of calls uh, on the TV and the radio. A lot of women experimenting with women these days. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it's not why, quite as tap. What? Why are you going there? <laughs> he wants her phone number. No, I, 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 believe me. I'm going to stop. Listen, she opened the gate. I'm just stumbling into the yard. That's all. <laughs> Oh, no. I'm not going, it doesn't have to be personal. All I'm saying is, is that uh, when I was 19, these things weren't going on. Women weren't uh, experimenting with women as right. is, is often as they are. Right. You'll attest to that, Drew. Is this going on as far as definitely, you know? Definitely. Really? A lot more same-sex um, exploration. Actually, a girl approached my boyfriend, um, wanted to have sex with him, but he said, no, I have a girlfriend. So he said, oh, well, if I can't have you, then I'll have her. I was like, right. okay. 
So now she wants a threesome. She wants us to try that. Um, I'm not opposed to it. I've. It's... Listen, listen to this show for a while. You hear what happens to relationships when another person comes in, they always fall apart. Sure, I'll talk you right out of sex. You, you'll, uh, <laughs> you'll dry up like the uh, Nairobi desert, believe me, man. Right? Let's sit in this closet. You won't have sex for a year Let's just sitting in this proximity. Let's talk to Josh, he's 19. Hello, hey. uh, I'm 19, mysterious and fun loving kid. Uh, I've been dating my girlfriend for oh, two, two and a half years. We have a terrifically strong sex life. Um, me usually dominating the, the bedroom wreckage. Josh, um, Josh, what is your question? Yeah, you're not placing a <laughs> personal ad here, Josh. <laughs> all right, Come on. all right, I'm sorry over there. Uh, anyways, uh, good sex life, and she's taken it a step farther and bought sex toys. I mean, we're talking whips, chains, wax on the nipples, dildos, etc. What is your question? <laughs> I'm sorry. What is your question? Um, well, I'm, I'm getting a little bit discouraged because she's been using these on, my, on me, and basically I don't want... Uh, I don't want my backside de-virginized, so <laughs> oh. I, I, guess I'm, I guess I'm looking for a little something from you. Uh, I, I'm not sure I like that transition. Uh, Josh, we will get into it with the panel when we come back from the break. <laughs> Back with the band Uriah Heep. You know, they had some hits in the 70s. They're now making a big comeback. No. We're here with Mark, Amber, and JD. They do nothing. That's fine. We barely do anything ourselves. It is uh, audience guest night here on Loveline. A little sampling of the populace. And uh, actually, it turned out to be actually better than us so far. You're so I'm getting nervous. I don't like that anybody can do this business. Please, why don't you screw up? All right, uh, when we left off, we're speaking to uh, Josh. Josh uh, has a, a relationship for a couple of years, I right. believe. He, he, he describes the sex as uh, tremendous. Now his girlfriend is getting into outside uh, foreign objects. Uh, fomites is true, <laughs> fomites. I would say. A vibrator could be a fomite. Yes. You're uh, learning handcuffs. something. Handcuffs. Yes. Fomite. Yeah. Cat of nine tails. Fomite. Eight mite. Fomite. Nine mite. Okay. <laughs> The point is this. <laughs> what am I engaged in here? What is this? <laughs> I'd like this? to see how far he'll go. The, the point is, is he doesn't, he doesn't want this stuff used on him. Right. Or at least not is all. Is that it, Josh? Well, yeah. And, you know, basically, yeah, that's in a nutshell. That's right. Well, Josh, uh, we, wait, have you told her you don't want to do this stuff? This is not something you're into. Well, you? I mean, I think she knows that by my painful yells. And, I mean, no, that's Josh, pretty evident. No, this is ridiculous. Come I'm on. Sorry. I wonder why he's so mysterious. Recoculous, thank Recoculous. you. Recoculous. Well, wh why don't, before you're screaming in pain, why don't you tell her you do not like to do this? Okay, I, I, that's fine. Josh. Yes, sir. Look down. Are you wearing uh, trousers or are you wearing a skirt? Uh, Please, who is the man in this relationship? Yeah. Wait a minute. Yes. Women can dominate. I, I like being on top. I like dominating handcuffs. Really? Whipped cream. I mean, I don't think so. No, there, there's nothing wrong with that, but, but you would agree that if, if you were the partner who totally disliked things right. you were trying to do, you'd probably re at least compromise. Mm -hmm. But you'd have to tell you that that's how we felt. Josh? Right. But, Again, he's got Josh. one of those uh, gimp masks on and he can't talk. <laughs> I mean, focus, ladies and gentlemen, no. focus on your relationship. I mean, the physical stuff comes after the relationship. If the relationship is functioning, then the physical stuff tends to take care right. of itself. But see if you can talk squeeze your the girlfriend. relationship into the dinner parts so and get right into the physical. Is that All what you're right. saying, Drew? <laughs> I'm saying let's go to the next call. <laughs> All right, let's talk to Iris. Iris. When I was about nine years old, I was sexually molested, and this was before I hit puberty. All right. And I was wondering, I'm 19 now, I was wondering if I'm technically or medically still a virgin. No, you're really not. I'm not. Okay, now, it's a very interesting question, though. I mean, what, and I'm glad it's an audience night, because what does what our culture really consider virginity? I mean, what is that that we're trying to preserve? Really, I think what you're trying to do is preserve yourself from a physical intimacy that you're not ready to handle yet. Really? I mean, it, the kind of commitments that go with that, the yeah. kind of emotional uh, connections that go with that. So really, in, from a standpoint of, as far as I'm concerned, you're still a, you're, you are a virgin. Oh, Physically, definitely. you are not. Definitely. You are not. Because oh. it, 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 provided, you, were you penetrated by yeah. part of, yeah, I mean, yeah. so you're not. But I, the, the idea is for Iris now to take care of Iris and to get some help with dealing with being a survivor of sexual abuse. It's a very heavy issue. It's got to affect your relationships. Have you had any treatment? Uh, no, I, I don't think I need it. I, I'm a, I'm a, fairly well-rounded person. 
I've gotten over it. How old were you? I was nine. about nine. nine. Oh, nine. Okay. Yeah. Yes, you need it. Yeah, yeah. Iris, it, 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 yeah. we talked to a lot of people who say, gee, I'm, I'm over it now. I've dealt with that issue. Mm -hmm. it, it's, you're, you're trying to put it back in a corner and keep it hidden away from yourself, and it, it has to have some, some substantial impact on you. Watch but it, it did. Watch but your relationships. Are you able to have normal, stable relationships with boys or, or girls, whatever you're... Oh, what, no. What? No, I've never been in a, in a relationship because I feel that... Once I get into a relationship, I want to get married, and I haven't found that right person. Okay, but, but Iris, you'll, you're going to have some difficulty finding that person and sustaining that kind of relationship because of this experience, in all probability. Just, just put, put that away somewhere and think about the possibility that you might benefit from some treatment, okay? All right, Iris. Uh, okay. And, and, and think about what it is you're preserving as a virgin. I, I would consider Iris a virgin. She right. is, she is uh, unready for a sexual relationship. She is looking for a committed relationship. She is not engaging in any other physical intimacies other than that one which she is looking for, to my estimation. The only reason I, I, it was brought up onto me, I, I've always felt like I was. It was recently that I told a friend of mine, a close friend of mine, and he made the comment, oh, so you're not a virgin. Well, that just, that's, uh, that's uh, got to hurt. Kind of that wasn't yeah. something that I wanted to it's, hear. It's got to hurt physically or not, technically or not, but let's say spiritually, and you are, okay? Okay. Iris. <laughs> She needs, get... she, needs to, she needs to be careful and find a guy that will not uh, take advantage take of her, advantage which is what she's set up that. for right now, frankly. Yeah. Somebody's going to really take and, advantage of her. And this is why you got to look into this. It's, yes. it's no different than a medical condition. Yes. I mean, it, you step on a rusty nail, if you didn't get a tetanus shot within you know, five years or whatever, you have to get one, yeah. right? Yeah. End of discussion. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. you were molested at age nine, you have to get some counseling. At, le at least get, get assessed to see if there's a potential for something going on there. Well, it doesn't mean you're, you're flawed or, no. or you're nuts or anything. It's just it's like a condition that yeah. has to be dealt yes, with to some she, degree. Right, if she'd broken her arm and needed physical therapy since she was nine or something. Okay. Same idea. Sarah. Hi. Hey. Um, I contracted crabs about a month and a half ago, and I treated myself. I washed all my stuff, and 10 days later, I did a second treatment just to make sure that they were completely gone. And I thought that they were completely gone, but now, like, a month after I did the last treatment, they've come back. And now they've gotten into not only my hair, but also my mom's hair. And I'm wondering, oh. <laughs> what exactly can I do to get rid of the crabs completely? <laughs> I've heard of that Sarah. before. Sarah uh, got crabs herself. Sarah believes she rid herself of the crabs by using uh, the mustache comb and the uh, uh, special <laughs> shampoo they uh, sell Something you. Something actually called rid. It is called red X. I was thinking about that when I said I had a friend who had crabs once. Yeah, and right. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> the point is, with the mustache comb and everything else, it's all left on the table. Right? Let me tell you something about the crabs for just one moment. Please. Okay. I, yeah, no one's given you've had no me. experience with them. No, no, yeah. no one will believe me. But uh, I know the Almighty believes me. And that's all that matters. I have never had crabs. I had a roommate who had crabs. Mm. And as you know, they're very contagious. Yes. And we captured one. Mm. <laughs> we, we did. We set up a little trap. We took a little box. We put a stick under it. We put like uh, some genitalia in there. We waited. <laughs> Pulled the thing. No, and, and seriously, we, we actually captured <laughs> We put the crab on the uh, tile of the bathroom counter. And uh, this guy who had crabs before, he said, nothing kills a crab. I said, ammonia will kill anything. Because I've been putting ammonia into, like, spray bottles. I'll squirt, Wait. like, a spider or a cockroach or something. <laughs> die immediately. So you smell ammonia. ammonia. You almost no, no, Sarah, it. don't listen to that. I'll be with you in a second. I said, ammonia, well, we had a bet going. Ammonia will kill the crab. We had the little crab. There it was, you know. On the thing, and I dumped a little cap of ammonia on it, and it just walked right out. Walked right through, looked at me, broke wind, kept going <laughs> down the counter. <laughs> and nothing will kill these crabs but that, that special shampoo. Yeah, and there's, there are a couple of shampoos out there, but I, I, but I, su I suspect, Sarah, what happened... Mom, you can't And that really suggests that there's some other, what, what's called a vector out there, like some, some sofa or, or, or bedclothes or towels or something else 
that these the things, things. I've washed all of my clothes. It's, so it's not just your clothes, though, Sarah. It's your, how about the towels the and the and everything, um, pillowcases, car um, furniture, carpet, furniture, carpet. Oh, you have yeah, for, I've washed all of it, all of it. So mm. uh, you got to move. <laughs> Culture guy. Well, <laughs> retreat yourselves, both of you. Retreat everybody and uh, do the same procedure. How mad again. is your mom, Sarah? <laughs> what? Is your mom really PO'd? Oh, she absolutely. Who went to who? Wasn't happy. What? I'm, I'm guessing it went from Sarah to, to mom. I mean, the yeah, conversation, though. She, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it got into my hair, into my head hair, and then I guess it got into her head hair. How, so how did you contract them? Do you know? From sex. And, you, so yeah, and he didn't know that he had them, but yeah. It's definitely pubic lice, not just right. human yeah, lice. It started out with pubic lice, and then it spread to my hair and my mom's hair. So yeah. You know oh. what? You, you, oh, you might imagine her telling the bridge club <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> you, you might also. <laughs> oh, what a conversation! <laughs> you might also need to consult with a, with a exterminator. If you make really? some, some professional service that. Uh, the guy drives the truck, the big crab <laughs> on the road. <laughs> see what the antenna looks like on that truck. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, Gwen on the Loveline phone, what's your question? Gwen? Hey, how you doing? Good. 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 Um, well, I've been kind of going through a dry spell. I haven't had sex in about a year and a half. And I was wondering if it's going to, like, hurt as bad as the first time I ever did it, or will I bleed again? Or? Uh, you will not bleed again. It, it might be uncomfortable, but it's not going to be like the first time. Okay. It's not, okay? okay. It, it's not, there's a lot of misconception about uh, the female organ and what it will and will not do. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a very compliant part of your body. You don't have to worry about it. It'll take care really? of itself. Really? Would a man I found it to be I difficult. Mean, I know some. <laughs> okay, because I'm really nervous. Uh, do it again, you know? Uh, do, just make sure you're with a sensitive partner who is listening to you and willing to, to sort of make sure that you're comfortable and that your needs are being met. If you're really concerned about it, I mean, you could prime the pump. So to speak. Oh. Talk about, uh, talk about yeah. masturbating. Yeah. Well, what about it, Gwen? Well, I don't know. I don't really feel comfortable masturbating. It's not, I don't really masturbate. All right, but you, will you feel comfortable with a man if you're not comfortable masturbating? Well, yeah, I'm very comfortable with guys, but you know, I just rather have a guy please you, me you, than myself. You see how different women are than men. I mean, this mm -hmm. is this is it is different, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It is a biological. It's not. That's not. That is not a cultural difference. That is a biological difference. All right. Uh, she doesn't want to. Don't do it. Fine. We're plumb out of show. I want to thank Mark, Amber, and JD for coming up and being uh, good sports and good guests. Give them a hand. They were great. Also, I want to thank the lovely Chris Magaha for doing a great job. Until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo.